in most preparation you you may come across a setup which have a diagram of this sort. So the labeling of the part is very very important. Now so this is what we call the retort stand. Retort stand. What is attached to the retort stand? We call it the clamp. The clamp. And then we have this one. We call it the tripod stand. Tripod stand. Now this is the source of heat, which is a benzene burner. Or you can say source of heat. Now we call this the testo funnel. Testo funnel. Tesla funnel. And then this sometimes when you are naming this, you are supposed to look at the base. You can see the base of this is flat. So this is a flat bottomed flask. flat bottom flask now if <coughs> if the bottom is round so for instance then this one is round bottom flask okay so here yeah, the bottom is round so it's a round bottom flask but in this case it is flat so it's a flat bottom flask okay and then at the entrance of the flask we have what we call the cork this is similar to this so whatever it says it has this so that is the cork or sometimes we call it the rubber bank or sometimes we call it the stopper the stopper Uh, this one is the cock. Okay, I say stopper. I say rubber band. So, if you are supposed to label this, that's still the cock. Now, this one is what we call the delivery tube. So, this is the delivery tube. Now we call this the gas cylinder. Gas cylinder, or you can say gas jar. Gas jar. So instead of saying gas cylinder, you can also call it the gas jar. Now the entrance or the mouth of the cylinder, we have the cardboard. The cardboard. Okay, so these are some of the parts, uh, the name of some parts, or some of the parts you come across when it comes to preparation for uh, of the various gases. You come across most of these parts. Now there are some key informations you are supposed to know. So the essence of the retort stand, together with the clamp, is to hold the set up firmly in position. So the clamp and a retort stand <coughs> is to help hold the, the flat bottom flask firmly in position. The tripod stand here is also giving support to the, the flat bottom flask. 
the benzene burner here, that's the source of heat. So that is to help provide heat. Heat. Okay. Now this tester fan is contain a solution. Usually the solution is either an acid or a base. And the base that is here or the acid moves through the tester fan and then goes into the flask. It is important to know that in this diagram, the tester funnel, whatever is bringing the solution, must be immersed, must be inside the solution. So this tester funnel is inserted into the solution. It is not above the solution. So sometimes diagram will be given and you'll be asked to identify the errors in the diagram. So if the, if the diagram is given and you have the tester funnel, outside hanging outside the the solution in the flask then that is a source of error so the tester funnel must be inserted into the so solution and secondly the delivery tube which is supposed to carry the gas away the gas that is going to be prepared or the gas that is formed the that uh, the the delivery tube must not be inserted in the solution it must be outside so i'm talking about two things the tensile funnel has to be in the solution, but the delivery tube has to be outside the solution. So we take notes of that. So in a diagram where, where the tensile funnel is outside the solution, it is an error. Similarly, if the delivery tube is inserted into the solution, that is also a source of error. That is a source of error. Okay. Now, what's the role of the cork here? The cork here is to prevent escape the gas that is being produced from escaping from escaping okay so it makes sure that the whole whatever is happening in the flask is sealed nothing is moving out nothing is moving in and the delivery tube here is to transfer the gas that is prepared here into the gas cylinder meaning the function of the gas cylinder here is to collect the gas so the gas cylinder or the gas jar is used for collecting the gas at the mouth of the gas jar, you have the cardboard. So the cardboard here is to prevent the gas that, that is being collected from escaping into the air. Into the air. Okay, so these are the functions of some of the parts of the setup used in preparation of gases. Used in preparation of gases. Okay. You can also have a setup
Okay, so you can also have a setup that looks like this. And so you have still your retro stand, your clamp, flat bottom flats, tripod stand. You have the pesto funnel with the solution. As I said, your tester funnel should be inserted in the solution. And you have the delivery tube, which should be outside the solution. Over here, the second part of the diagram is what is different. It's different from this. And this, this is the basin. So this one is basin. We call this basin, or we also call it trough. The trot. What is inside here is water. So sometimes we call it water basin or water trot. And then this we call it the beehive stand. So beehive stand. So we come out, we've come across about three stands. We have the retail stand. This, the tripod stand, what is here? Retail stand, tripod stand, and this one is what we call the beehive stand. And uh, this one is the gas jar. My this, you can see that the gas jar has been turned upside down. So we call it inverted gas jar. Inverted gas jar or gas cylinder. So this one, you don't just label it as gas jar or gas cylinder. It has been turned upside down, so it's, you, may, you label it as inverted gas jar. And whatever is, so you have water, whatever is here, is the gas that is being collected. So for instance, if you are preparing hydrogen gas, then this gas, whatever is collected there, is the hydrogen gas, is the hydrogen gas. Now please take note of this. Over here to, the, B, uh, the delivery tube has to be inserted into the beehive stand. So just like your Tesla fan has to be inserted in the solution, the delivery tube has to be inserted into the beehive stand. So if it is outside, then that is also a source of what? Error. That is also a source of error. So you are supposed to take note of that. So the delivery tube has to be inserted into uh, the beehive stand, beehive stand. Okay, so these are uh, some form of diagrams you'll be coming across uh, when we start looking at questions and how to label the parts. So take note of it. Now, in preparation of gases, we have what we call method of collection. Method of collection of gas. So the gas that is being prepared, how is it collected? We have what we call the upward and downward delivery. So this is one method of collection of gas, upward and downward delivery. And that this, we have the upward delivery. which we also call downward displacement of air. Of air. And uh, this, you, you have a setup this way. So you have your gas jar, and then you have the delivery tube coming down. So this is the direction. So the gas that is coming <coughs> is moving down. So the gas is coming down this way. So that's what we call downward delivery. Downward delivery. Oh, okay, first of all, I said upward delivery. So the diagram, let me redraw the diagram. 
So for an upward delivery, you have the delivery tube pointing upwards this way. So that's the direction. So it is the delivery tube that's carrying the gas. So that's the direction of the gas. The gas is moving up. So that's why we call it upward delivery. Upward delivery. Now we also call it downward displacement of air. Why? Because before the gas comes in, the the gas jar is filled with air. So if the gas is coming in, it displaces the air that is in there. So the gas is coming up. So the uh, the air that is originally there will move downwards. So that's what we call it, downward displacement of air. So the upward delivery is also known as the downward displacement of air. Downward displacement of air. Now, we gases are collected by upward delivery. If a gas is collected by upward delivery, then it means that that gas is less denser than air. That is, if you are comparing the weight air is heavier than the gas so that is why it is collected by upward delivery that is why it's collected by upward delivery so any gas that is collected by this has a property so that gives you one property it means that that gas is less dense than air that gas is less denser than air an example of gases that are less denser than air you have hydrogen gas so hydrogen gas is collected by by downward delivery you also have ammonia gas which is also collected by upward delivery so these gases are collected by upward delivery what it means is that these two gases are less denser than air so they are less denser than air less denser than air and then we also have the okay so under this we have the uh, downward delivery which we also call the upward displacement of air upward displacement of air so So with that one, the setup looks this way. So your gas jar will not be inverted. Here the gas jar is inverted. Here the gas jar is upright. And then the delivery tube is bringing the gas downwards. So that's the direction of the gas that is coming in. So because the gas is coming downwards, we call it downward delivery. But as I said, the, the gas jar contains air. So if the gas is coming down, the air will move upwards in this direction. So that's what we call the upward displacement of air. Now, any gas that is collected by this method is heavier, that it is more denser than air. So gases like oxygen gas, carbon dioxide gas, chlorine gas, hydrogen chloride gas. Nitrogen gas, the remaining gases, all these gases, they are collected by downward delivery because they are more denser than air. More denser than air. Okay, so that is the first method of collection of gases. We also have, so the second method of collection of gas we refer to as collection above water. 
So that is the second method of collection of gases. Collection above water. So you have collection. Above water. So this is the first method, upward or downward delivery. And then the other method we refer to as collection above water. Collection above water. Now, if, if you consider this setup, probably this is a gas jar. So you think that because the gas jar is inverted this way, so you, you may be tempted to say that the gas is collected by an upward delivery. But that is wrong. Anytime a diagram is given and then you have this as part of the diagram, the bee has stand inside uh, a basin or trough containing water. And then the, the gas jar is placed on the bee have stand. Then the method of collection is collection above water. So if you are asked, what is the method of collection? here it is collection above water if you look at this diagram here yeah, this part of the setup is not there there is no base basin containing water so here yeah, the gas here is coming directly this way so for this diagram the method of collection is downward delivery downward delivery or you can see uh, upward displacement of air so please take note so that is method of collection either by upward or downward delivery or collection above water. Now, if a gas is collected above water, it means that that gas is insoluble. That gas is insoluble in water. Insoluble in water. That's one. So, a gas that is collected above water, it means that that gas is insoluble in water, as I said earlier on. So, some gases that are collected above water, you have hydrogen gas, you have oxygen gas, you have carbon dioxide gas. So, any gas that is collected by this method, it means that the gas is insoluble in water. Now, so whatever I've written here is important because you, in the question, as part of the question, can be asked to identify the method of collection and then you give a reason why the gas is collected by that method. So if the gas is collected by upward delivery, the reason why it's collected by upward delivery is because that gas is, the gas is less denser than air. If the gas is collected by a downward delivery, then the reason is that the gas is more denser than air or it is heavier than air and then if it is collected above water then it means that that gas is insoluble in water insoluble in water so that is for uh, collection of gases the method of collection of gases now a quick comment let me comment a little bit on some general properties that you come across. Properties. Yeah, when I talk of properties, most of the common properties you come across is one. So I've indicated uh, the property, one property that you come across. The method of collection should give you one property of the gas. 
uh, as I said, if the gas is collected by downward delivery, then the property you can state is that that gas is less dense than air. If it is collected by an upward delivery, uh, if it is collected by an upward delivery, then the gas is less dense than air. But if it is collected by a downward delivery, then the gas is more denser than air. So that gives you one property. Or if the gas is collected above the water, as indicated in this diagram, then the property you can write is that the gas is insoluble in water. The gas is insoluble in water. So that is one property you can come out with based on the method of collection indicated in the diagram. Indicated in the diagram. One another property is the color of the gas. The color of the gas. So when it comes to color, most of the gases are colorless. So colorless gas. So colorless gas. So most of the gases. So if you even if you for, uh, forget uh, the various properties, one property you should write is that you can assume that the gas is colorless because if you look at all the gases we are considering here, hydrogen is a colorless gas, oxygen is a colorless gas, carbon dioxide is a colorless gas, ammonia is a colorless gas, hydrogen chloride, colorless gas, nitrogen is a colorless gas. This is the only gas that has color. So all the remaining gases, they do not have color. So if you write color, it is a colorless gas. It is likely that will be correct. So colorless gas. Your hydrogen is a colorless gas. Oxygen colorless. Carbon dioxide colorless. Uh, NH3 colorless. ECL colorless. And then N2 colorless. Now CO2 has color. That one is yellowish green. So let me write this as note. So fluorine gas. So to so have that in mind that apart from fluorine gas, the other gases you're supposed to look at, they are colorless. They are colorless. The other property you, are, you also talk about is odor. Odor, the scent or smell of the gas. The scent or smell of the gas. Uh, so for odor, we have some of the gases that are odorless. Odorless gas means that the gas has no smell. It has no scent. So examples of odorless gases we have Hydrogen is odorless gas. Oxygen is odorless. Carbon dioxide is odorless. Okay. Now, your ammonia gas, chlorine gas, and the hydrogen chloride gas, they have a smell. We, have, we call it pungent smell. So, so, NH3, CO2, ACO have tangent. Instead of pungent, you also you can also use the word irritating. Irritating, or you can also say choking. Choking smell. So these gases, they have odor. When you, they are released, you it has a choking smell. When you breathe, then you begin to choke up. So that's why you say choking smell, or sometimes you say pungent or irritating specifically if you are talking about ammonia ammonia has urine like smell 
So take note that ammonia and H3 has a urine like urine like smell. Okay, so that is to uh, to specifically describe the choking smell of NA3. It has a urine like smell. The way urine smells, that's how the ammonia gas smells. Okay, but in general, it has a choking smell. You can see it has a pungent smell. Okay, so that is in terms of color, that is in terms of odor. The first thing I've talked about is the density, as whether it is less dense than air or it is less, it is more dense than air. Okay, so those are some. Uh, general characteristics you are supposed to take note of. Take note of. The last thing I'm going to talk about uh, properties is you can be asked to state, give examples of acidic gases and then basic gases. So acidic gases and then basic gases. That is also a property. Okay, so if the gas dissolves in water to form an acid, then we describe it as an acidic gas. If it dissolves in water to form a base, then we call it a basic gas. Now, so some examples of acidic gases. We have carbon dioxide gas, we have hydrogen fluoride gas. Okay, so these are acidic gases. SO2, those in elective chemistry, SO2 is also an acidic gas. It's also an acidic gas. Okay. Now And then for basic gas, we have only one basic gas here, that is the ammonia. So ammonia is the only basic gas, is the only basic gas. Okay. Now, those in elective chemistry to this, when it comes to this, the smell of this, all these are pungent, in terms of pungent, all these are pungent smell. Uh, this one, the smell of this, if you want to be specific, this rotten egg like. So rotten egg, high smells, that's how H2S smells. And then this one has a smell of burning sulfur. Burning sulfur. Okay, so that is general properties of the gases. General properties of the gases. Okay. Now, in terms of test, you have all, as I, all these information I'm talking about, they are captured in the, in the PDF that I've forwarded to the WhatsApp page. So you can refer to them and then you get access to all this information that I'm talking about. Now, in terms of test, general test, for hydrogen, to test for hydrogen, we use what we call a glowing splint. So you make use of glowing splint. Uh, an example of glowing splint is what we call the lighter. Uh, what is used to light, for instance, a cigarette? That is a glowing splint. So if it is hydrogen gas, if you have a hydrogen gas in a test tube, and then the flames of a glowing splint is introduced into the the test to contain the hydrogen gas you see that the the flames will glow more that means it begins to burn more if that happens then it, no okay you're talking of hydrogen gas no if you introduce this the glowing splint the flames of a glowing splint into a test to contain hydrogen gas you rather hear 
a pop sound. So pop sound. Pop. So if you hear this sound, then it means that the gas is, is hydrogen gas. The gas is hydrogen gas. When it comes to oxygen, oxygen to be make use of the glowing splint. So please take note. For hydrogen, both hydrogen and oxygen, we make use of a glowing splint. If it's hydrogen, if you introduce the flames of the glowing splint into a test to contain the gas, you hear a pop sound. For oxygen, if you introduce the flame, then the flame will glow more. Or we say the flame rekindles. So the glowing splint rekindles. So for yeah, this is the observation. So observation for hydrogen. This is what you will see. Observation. The oxygen. This is the observation that you see. Observation. You see this. Okay. So both make use of glowing splints, but for hydrogen. You hear a pop sound for oxygen, the splint to rekindle. That is, it will glow more. It will glow more. Now, when it comes to carbon dioxide, we make use of lime water. Lime water is actually a solution of calcium hydroxide. So aqueous solution of calcium hydroxide is lime water. And here was the observation. The lime water will turn milky. So yeah, if you introduce a gas into a test tube containing lime water, what you observe is that the lime water will turn milky. It becomes cloudy becomes cloudy. It's more like when you pour uh, milk into water, how you see it, the cloudiness, that's how it will look like. So that's how you test for uh, carbon dioxide in the laboratory. Okay. For ammonia, if you want to test for ammonia, you make use of ACO, aqueous ACO. Or you can say chlorine gas. You make use of chlorine gas. Hydrogen chloride gas, rather. Not chlorine gas. You make use of ACL gas. What's the observation? So in this, what do you do? The ACL gas will be in a test tube. And then you pass or you bubble the, the ammonia gas through it. And the observation that is that you form white fumes. white fumes will be formed the four white fumes that is formed is as a result of the compound that is formed and it for seal so when we add this with this we form ammonium chloride that is responsible for the white fumes uh, that that is formed or that is observed similarly if you are testing for so these two work in hand in hand if you are testing for Hydrogen chloride gas, you make use of ammonia gas. For ammonia gas, the ACL gas will be in the test tube. And you pass the ammonia into the test tube. For, it, for this, we are testing for the ACL, so the ammonia gas will rather be in the test tube. And you get the same observation. So, Y fumes will be formed. Okay. And then for chlorine, chlorine gas, we make use of moist, late moist paper.
more slate, more paper. Words of observation. The observation here is that the litmus paper becomes bleached. Becomes bleached. So the litmus paper becomes bleached. Okay. So, so that is one property of, or one use of chloringa. It is a bleaching agent. So when you go to the clothing industry, manufacturing of tie and dye, those guys have chlorine use. So that is why when you put the litmus paper inside, uh, the litmus paper become bleached. Okay. So these are some of the general tests of the various gases. The various gases. Now, let me talk about quickly how you identify that the gas, uh, that, how you identify the gas that is being prepared from a given setup. How you identify that the gas being prepared, the gas that is prepared from a given setup. How do you do that? Okay. So identification of gas. It falls under preparation. So for preparation, quickly, for hydrogen gas, we have a metal reacting with an acid. Then the gas that we produce will be hydrogen gas. So for instance, you have zinc reacting with ACO, they have zinc chloride plus hydrogen gas. So this is a gas that will be produced. So that is how hydrogen gas is prepared in the lab. So in the setup, the zinc granules will be here and they have the acid, that's the ACO in the testal funnel. So that will be the setup. Okay. The other way of preparing hydrogen gas is using what we call hydrogen peroxide. H2O2. Okay. So hydrogen can also be prepared in the lab using hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide. I'm oh, sorry. The hydrogen peroxide is used in preparation of oxygen. Okay, so you take note for hydrogen gas, you make use of metal and then uh, an acid. So when a metal reacts with an acid, you are forming zinc chloride and then you are forming hydrogen gas. Now, what about oxygen? So the oxygen. Uh, there are two ways of preparing oxygen. The first one is hydrogen peroxide that I was talking about. So hydrogen peroxide. That's H2O2. H2O2. And this reaction, you have the MnO2. Okay, so over here, the gas that we produce is this. You can see in this, the reaction I've written, I have MnO2. This MnO2 is not a reactant, but it's playing the role of a catalyst. So catalyst. Catalyst, that is, it is helping to speed up the rates of the reaction, the rates of the reaction. 
and the other process for pre preparation of hydrogen gas is using KClO3. This one, you heat it, you apply heat, heat, and I have MnO2 also as a catalyst. And I have KCO plus oxygen gas formed. As a balance equation. So these are the two ways of preparing oxygen gas. In both cases, you have magnesium, the uh, manganese dioxide, or we say magne manganese four oxide, the MnO2 there is manganese four oxide. Okay, or we say manganese, manganese dioxide. So it's playing the role of a catalyst that is by speeding up the rate of the reaction. So if you come across this, then it means you are preparing oxygen gas. If it is hydrogen, if you are using this hydrogen peroxide, then the hydrogen peroxide will be in the tester fan. That's what is coming down. And then you have your MnO2. The catalyst will be in the tester, uh, in the flat bottom flask. So in this setup, the hydrogen peroxide will be here, and then the MnO2 will be here. For this, you are just going to heat this in a test tube. So you have a test tube, and then you heat it. You have the KClO3. The KClO3 in the test tube, and you have, you apply heat. So you have the KClO3 plus the MnO2. You apply and then there is a test tube here. The test tube comes in. And then the gas that is prepared goes into the gas jar. Okay, so that one you have a setup of this sort. Okay, so take notes. Okay, now, so that is for hydrogen gas and then oxygen gas. Now, what about um, carbon dioxide? For carbon dioxide gas, you have a carbonate reacting with an acid. So, for instance, you have calcium carbonate reacting with an acid. So calcium carbonate reacting with ECO and acid. You form calcium chloride plus water and then CO2. So this is the gas that we produce. So whenever you have a carbonate, any compound that contains CO3, you see it reacting with an acid, you form carbon dioxide. If I also write this, for instance, uh, NaH CO3. This is also a carbonate because it contains CO3. You react this with an ACO, AC, uh, which is an acid. You form NaCO plus water plus CO2. Okay. So when a carbonate reacts with an acid, you form carbon dioxide. Then for ammonia, When you have ammonium salt, ammonium salt plus a base. So, for instance, I have NH4Cl combining with let's say sodium hydroxide. And for NaCO plus H2 plus NH3. Okay, so here you are forming the ammonia gas. So anytime you have a compound containing ammonium, NH4, then, and then it's reacting with a base, you are going to form 
ammonia gas. You are going to form ammonia gas. You are going to form ammonia gas. Okay. Now, how do you form ACL gas? Let me bring it. In forming ACL gas, the common way of preparing ACL gas is combining hydrogen gas and then chlorine gas. And then you form ACL gas. There are other uh, preparation methods, but this is one of the common ways we are preparing ACL gas in the lab. Nitrogen gas is obtained from air, so that one we don't prepare using equation. You actually obtain from air. You obtain from air. Okay. All right. So that is uh, uh, some of the preparation. Uh, you you would you be able to identify the particular gas that is prepared in the in the lab or from the setup that is given. Possible.